First of all, I want to just take a moment and say thank you to all the folks who have been so kind and gracious over these last uh, couple of weeks uh, in the decline and ultimately the death of my father. Um, it has been almost a surreal journey since the 22nd of August, and I appreciate all of your support and your kindnesses that have been extended to us. Thank you very much. I share with you two passages of scripture, from, first from Romans chapter 12, and then from James chapter 1. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourselves, but leave room for God's wrath. It's written, revenge belongs to me, says the Lord. But instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. And then from James, the first chapter. My sisters and brothers, think of the various tests that you encounter as occasions for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. But anyone who needs wisdom should ask God, whose very nature is to give to everyone without a second thought, without keeping score. Wisdom will certainly be given to those who ask. Whoever asks shouldn't hesitate. They should ask in faith without doubting. Whoever doubts is like the surf of the sea, tossed and turned by the wind. People like that should never imagine that they will receive anything from the Lord. They are double-minded and unstable in all their ways. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And then I share with you three brief quotations. The first from the former president of South Africa, Statesman, statesman and leader of the anti-apartheid movement, Nelson Mandela. He said, do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up. From Giver Tully, an author, educator, and computer scientist, Persistence and resilience only comes from having been given the chance to work through difficult problems. And finally, from poet and civil rights activist, Maya Angelou, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. Will you pray with me? In the course of our busy lives, Almighty God, you grant us times of rest and spiritual refreshment. Grant that we may use such times as these to perceive the ways in which you are calling to us, and then grant us the strength and the courage to pursue those things until we accomplish them. In these moments of prayerful listening and thinking, we ask that you will open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, that we will discover more completely who you are and what you are calling us to be and to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Over the last few days, we all have been re-educated about the horrific events that occurred on the morning of September 11, 2001. 
20 years ago. 20 years. Hardly seems possible. We've been reminded of that fateful day with carefully produced and well-documented television specials. I would imagine that most of us have probably read articles, thoughtful articles, made available to us through the news media, just as we have engaged in conversations with neighbors and friends, sharing our own personal memories. The clock now has ticked away a generation since that surreal day. And yet, after all this time, we still need to reflect and remember and rehearse what happened and what lessons we continue to learn about ourselves, our society, and the human capacity for destruction and going through loss and grief and working to be resilient to rebuild. As Maya Angelou so poignantly expressed, we have all been changed by what has happened, but we are not reduced by it. Certainly, certainly as people of faith, we need to prayerfully explore where we have seen or experienced God at work as we have endured and recovered and continue to heal, even though probably most of us have more questions than we have answers. Some of us sitting in this room remember with extraordinary clarity where we were, what we were doing, and the emotions that we felt as the result of seeing those images of the four planes going into buildings, the field, and the Pentagon. In every community, the doors to houses of worship were flung open for prayer services almost immediately. For months, months, weekend worship services in nearly every house of worship was packed. People were seeking spiritual guidance. They were looking for support. It was rather miraculous that people turned toward God and toward each other, attempting to make sense of the senseless. There are others who are sitting in this room who were young enough in 2001 that their knowledge of 9-11 has been shaped more by what they have read or watched or heard. Still others in this room were not born yet, and they depend entirely on parents and grandparents and historians and storytellers and interpreters to paint an accurate picture of what happened. The world changed as a result of 9-11. Something happened. Something happened that was so immense that we have been changed permanently. Fear, suspicion, and distrust became a constant companion to our everyday lives. While we have worked hard to not allow the fear of terrorism to control what we do or when we do it, the truth is that life before 9-11 compared to life after 9-11 11 is unrecognizably different. It's actually a rather curious juxtaposition to me. 
Here we are in 2021, 20 years later, living in a season of yet another life-altering crisis. Something is happening as a result of a pandemic that is so immense that we will be changed permanently yet again. Are there lessons that we learned 20 years ago that might guide us through the murky waters of what we are currently going through? Did we learn anything Anything at all about life and death? Did we learn anything about emotional pain and grief? Did we learn anything about anger and anxiety and fear? Did we learn about the forces of good and evil and how the pursuit and practice of goodness will overcome evil? Did we learn anything about God and faith and the power of prayer as we walked through the valley of the shadow of death? I'm convinced that most of us can weather almost any storm that come our, comes our way because we have been there before. There are similarities from crisis to crisis. Are we wise enough to connect what we have been through and learn from the past and then apply those lessons in facing the challenges of today and tomorrow? It seems to me that that's the point the Apostle James was trying to make when he wrote, think of the various tests that you encounter but he phrased it curiously, didn't he? As an occasion for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So let endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, lacking in nothing. Experience can be a wondrous gift, a gift of wisdom and a gift of strength and endurance and resilience. As I have looked back to that crisis 20 years ago, it seems to me that it was met with extraordinary unity. Our grief and our anger and our confusion were channeled toward the common good. We had a collective resolve that hate and evil would not win. Unity was seen among all governmental leaders that has not been replicated since. We seemed focused very focused on defeating the enemy. But who's the enemy now? It's complicated, isn't it? Very complicated. Who's the enemy? Who's friend? Even Jesus had a difficult time with that, don't you know? The one with the sword was a friend. The one with the kiss was the enemy. How do you tell the difference? There were just under 3,000 deaths on 9-11. Collectively, we were heartbroken. Heartbroken. The emotional pain and grief was nearly unbearable. It took years for justice to be accomplished. Yet in the crisis of today, 650,000 deaths in the United States alone have occurred. Think of this, 
put this in context. It's important. Every third day, every third day, the number of deaths on 9-11 is replicated because of the coronavirus. Every third day. The enemy today is not some mastermind hiding in the caverns and, the, of, and mountains of the Middle East. The enemy is anyone who diminishes their loved ones or colleagues or neighbors or friends in being cavalier about their responsibility to do everything possible to protect and save lives. Today it seems that our moral compass has shattered. It's broken. The unity that we enjoyed in the aftermath of 9-11 is needed desperately, desperately. Today we need to let go of the focus on me and reclaim a value of we. One of the great beacons of light in the New Testament is Romans 12. I love Romans 12. It's one of the greatest essays on Christian ethics that exists in Scripture. Let me remind you of a few phrases from Romans 12. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil. Hold on to what is good. Consider everyone as equal, and don't think of yourself as better than anyone else. To the best of your ability, live in peace. Don't be defeated by evil. Defeat evil with good. Looking back 20 years ago, we learned some things, didn't we? Oh, they were hard lessons. They were. But 20 years from now, 20 years from now, when the next generation begins to look back at what we've done, how will they evaluate us? How will we be remembered by our family and our friends and our co-workers for the values and the decision-making that we have done in the heat of the crisis? You see, friends, every day, every day, we have choices to make. May God grant us the wisdom and the courage to overcome evil with good. May it be so. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in worship on this Sunday morning. It is so good to see so many people in the sanctuary. Thank you for being with us. Please don't forget the tailgate time of fellowship and lunch immediately after church and one uh, announcement that was overlooked is that next Saturday, September the 18th at 1 p.m. here at the church is a memorial service for Josh Johnson. Richard and Lois, it's their son, and I invite you to come and be with them in their remembrance as well as their time of grief. This is a peculiar time in the history of the world. We all have a role to play, ever so meager we may think, but what we are doing in the goodness that we share makes a powerful difference in our world. So go with God's grace and goodness into your day, into your week, so that Christ is seen and known by what you do, say, and think.
Thanks be to God. Amen.